Hey guys, and welcome back. The skill to identify the right supply and demand areas to trade is one of the most basic yet important techniques in smart money concepts. After numerous trades and backtesting on multiple pairs, we realized that supply and demand areas operate more effectively when they are accompanied by specific conditions. These conditions serve as critical filters, enhancing the accuracy and reliability of our trading decisions. So, in this video, we are going to show you the rules we use to identify high probability supply and demand zones that are respected in the market. Additionally, we'll demonstrate our technique for marking them on the chart, alongside the psychology behind these concepts and multiple chart examples. So guys, if that's something you're interested in, as always, hit the like button to show your support, and subscribe to our channel if you are new. See you guys after the intro and disclaimer. So, what do we call the supply and demand zone in smart money concepts? Supply and demand areas form on the chart when the smart money enters the market, causing significant price movement. It is a zone where the price has rapidly pushed away from, so lots of orders have been placed there. But not every significant price reaction considers a key supply and demand zone. We have multiple rules for identifying a key zone. Number one, it must create imbalance. Number two, it must break a structural level. And finally, it has to create or collect liquidity. So basically, we have three major criteria for a supply and demand zone. The areas that fulfill these criteria are considered key supply and demand zones. The rest are considered internal structure and minor levels. Imbalance, inefficiency, and fair value gaps are highly similar concepts. When smart money enters the market, it creates imbalance between the buyers and sellers, causing significant price movements with gaps between the wicks. Now, in this case, the price is buy-side inefficient, and we have fair value gaps between the wicks. The fair value gap is a three-candlestick pattern, where the wicks do not meet. Now here you can see examples of efficient and inefficient prices. As you can see in the second one, the wicks meet in the middle so we do not have fair value gaps in inefficiency. Now how can we use this to our advantage? When the price moves significantly and leaves fair value gaps behind, the price usually returns to these areas to fill the gap and restore balance. Combining this with the supply and demand concept allows us to identify potential trading opportunities. Here in this example, the price is moving in an uptrend. In this area, the price has created fair value gaps, indicating buy-side imbalance and sell-side inefficiency. Below the imbalance, we can find the demand zone, as this demand zone has contributed to the imbalance. Let's imagine if the price created another pullback, and we have another demand zone. The key difference is that the second demand zone has no imbalance. Therefore, there's a greater chance for the price to make a deep retracement to the demand zone that created the initial imbalance. This is because the inefficiency will act as a magnet for the price to come and fill this gap. So, witnessing this scenario on the chart, we will aim for the demand or supply zone that created the imbalance. This zone has a greater chance to reverse the price compared to zones associated with efficient movements. The next criterion is breaking the market structure or changing the character. A supply and demand zone is only valid if it breaks the structure or an opposite side zone. Let's imagine we have one, two, and three consecutive moves that break above the previous market structure with imbalance. Therefore, we have a valid demand area. Once again, we have a break of structure with imbalance, creating another demand zone. Now, if the price returns and revisits this area, it could present a good opportunity to go long. However, if the price manages to break the demand level to the downside, it indicates a change of character showing bearish momentum. The supply has taken control and a supply zone has formed. Now we are bearish until we reach the next unmitigated demand area ahead of the price. After reaching the demand zone, we no longer have a clear directional bias. We have to observe the price action to see if the demand is being respected or not. If we get confirmation in the lower time frames, we can take long positions with reduced risk. If the price shows no signs of bullish momentum, we can continue looking for short opportunities. 
Now the third or plus one criterion is collecting the liquidity. This is considered a plus one criterion because it is not necessary to create or sweep liquidity in order to have a valid zone. However, it serves as strong confirmation. So the first and second rules, creating imbalance and breaking the structure, must happen. And the third criterion, liquidity sweep, is just a confirmation. When price creates supports and internal structures before reaching a demand level, it increases the chance of bouncing off that level. Because all of these supports attract traders to buy the asset, their stop loss is considered sell orders. And if the smart money wants to buy this asset, it needs sellers in the market. This dynamic creates a scenario where price tends to bounce off the demand level as buyers step in to take advantage of the perceived value and sellers' orders are absorbed by the buying pressure. With all being said, forming liquidity grab patterns inside the supply and demand zones are great confirmations for short-term market structure shifts. After the liquidity grab pattern formations, the market will move away towards the liquidity zones on the other side. But how does a valid liquidity sweep pattern and reversal occur on the chart? Imagine that below the lowest point of this wick is where the liquidity exists. So, in a valid liquidity sweep pattern, we want to witness a wick breakthrough at this level and immediately close above the range. Or we can only have one candlestick close below this line, and then the next candle should immediately close back inside the range. Now this is an early sign that we might witness a temporary reversal at least to this supply level in front of the price. If the price manages to break and close above this supply area, we would have a change of character which confirms that the downtrend is over and a true reversal is coming. So combining the change of character concept with the liquidity sweep pattern will give us a perfect insight into future movements. Now let me show you some practical examples on the real chart to demonstrate how we analyze the market movements and mark the supply and demand zones. But before we continue, if you're curious about how we stay updated on financial news and fundamental analysis, well, we rely on Fastbull, one of the best trading websites with various useful trading tools. This site provides one of the most accurate and detailed economic calendar, a tool we use every day before starting our technical analysis. 24-7 economic live streaming also allows us to stay informed about the latest trading world's news and fundamental analysis. So if you want to benefit from multiple trading tools that can significantly improve your trading, make sure to check the link in the description. So here we have Eurodollar in the 4 hours chart. The market was in a long-term uptrend until it got exhausted and shifted the direction. After breaking the demand zone to the downside, it started to create lower lows and lower highs, which means we are witnessing a bearish trend right now. In a bearish trend, the market will create and respect the supply zones over and over again, which we call a supply chain. Now, let's define the market structure and mark the supply zones. As you can see, we have the last high point and low point right here. The price has broken the structure to the downside with this inefficient move, so we have both of the criteria fulfilled. Then the price has pulled back to the supply area and got rejected. So right now, the price is in the range of this high and low. When the price breaks below this level of market structure, we will have one of the criterias fulfilled. So let's see what will happen. So right now, the price broke below this level, and we have a new supply zone. Since this movement has created the imbalance, we have a clear fair value gap area right here, and we mark the candle that created the imbalance as our supply zone. The reason behind identifying this candle as supply zone is that we believe that the decisions are made during this candle before smart money entering the market. In the following part of the video, we will show you exactly how to mark the supply zones on the chart in different market situations. But for now, let's stick to identifying supply and demand zones. So right here, if the price returns to the supply zone, it would be a great opportunity to go short. And if it breaks this level to the upside, the demand takes control. Additionally, we are waiting for the price to break below this low and identify new supply zones. So, let's see what would happen. As you can see, price has created another inefficient movement to the downside and broke structure. This means that we have a new supply area up here. Once more, we have new inefficient movement with break of structure. So we mark our supply zone. Now, as you can see in this example, we have a very strong downtrend. And in a strong trending market, the pullbacks are usually small, 
and that's why the price drops before reaching the supply areas. However, here the price has tapped into our supply zone and got rejected to the downside, hopefully hitting our first target, which would have been below here. So, once again, we would have new supply areas if the price continues pushing downwards. And this method goes on and on for identifying new supply and demand levels. So basically, in this technique, we pay attention to three major concepts, inefficiency, breaks, and liquidity sweeps. You could use any trading setups to combine with the supply and demand concepts. But before using them with real money, you should backtest it on past data to obtain the performance. Backtesting allows you to build the required confidence and prepare for potential risks associated with the trading. Now, let us see a bullish example. Here we are on the 4-hour chart again, and as you can see, the price is in a bullish trend, creating higher highs and higher lows. This was our latest key supply zone right here, which by breaking above, we have a shift in market direction. So, we can apply the concept we have discussed in this video to the chart to identify key demand areas. These are all the demand areas that meet the three criteria, inefficiency, break of structure, and liquidity. Now let me show you how to mark the right area as our supply and demand zone in different market scenarios. Imagine we have a market movement with inefficiency like this. How would you mark your demand area to set a buy limit? As we mentioned earlier, the last recent candle before the inefficiency is considered our demand zone because we believe that decisions are made during this candle before smart money enters the market. If the price returns to this area, it might reject the price and provide us with a trading opportunity. However, it is not a law that the price must return and get rejected from this exact box we have drawn. In a strongly trending market, price often forms small pullbacks that do not reach the marked supply and demand area, which can lead to many missing trades. On the contrary, in markets with deep retracements, price might penetrate below our zone and then decide to push higher. So here the question is how to mark our demand area to have a high probability trade, avoid getting stopped, and missing the trade. One of the main factors to consider here is what our risk to reward ratio is in this trade. If we have a considerable space before reaching our first target, which is above here, maybe we can extend our demand zone because we will never know when the price might reverse. If we also add the candle to our demand area, we would still have a good risk to reward ratio in this trade, and our stop will be safe below this swing low. Additionally, we can add the latest bearish candles to our zone, which makes our demand area larger. This will reduce our risk to reward ratio. However, the solution for that is to zoom into the lower time frames when the price reaches our zone and enter at a better price when we get the confirmation. It's impossible to define rules for every scenario that might happen. But the important point here is that you need to consider three key factors when marking your supply and demand area, risk to reward ratio, stop loss placement, and retracement levels. Now let's talk about the wick zones. Here, we have a bullish movement with inefficiency and break of structure. We can see that this is the latest candle that has created the imbalance. So by default definition, this is going to be our demand area. However, we have a wick formation that penetrated below the candlestick and swept the liquidity, and then the market pushed higher. So, in this scenario, we will add the wick to our demand zone because the buying orders lie in this wick. But this will make our zone much larger. That's why sometimes we prefer to only consider the wick as our supply and demand area, or we can always look for confirmations in the lower time frames to enter the market if we have a large zone. Now let's see some real chart examples of wick zones. As you can see here, we have a movement with clear imbalance and a break of structure. This is the candle that created the imbalance, so normally we would mark this zone as our demand area. But we have a wick that grabbed the liquidity right after the demand candle. Therefore, since we have a great risk to reward ratio and space before reaching the next target, we would add this wick to our demand area as well. So, guys, that's it for this video. I hope this video provided value to you. If it did, please go ahead and smash the like button to show your support. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.